broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne. This is Will's Front, brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wills. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Wilms Front. My last featured interview show was back in July, so it has been a while, and it is now Thursday, uh, the 6th of October, 2022. We are live on the Wilms Front YouTube DLive and Odyssey channels. It is 8.45 p.m. here in Melbourne, Victoria, which means it is 10.45 a.m. in the UK, where the focus of this episode will be. Uh, the UK is facing an uncertain future and in the short term, a dark winter. The new trust government in Westminster is already entirely uh, dysfunctional with Liz Truss already a lame duck prime minister after a mini budget tax cut backflip. Uh, the UK and the Commonwealth has lost one of its last remaining unifying figures with the death of Queen Elizabeth II. While ordinary Brits uh, will struggle to afford food and energy this winter, uh, illegal dinghy divers uh, flooding across the English Channel, uh, given the red carpet treatment with free accommodation, heating food at luxury hotels. All the while, anyone who wishes to speak up in defence of traditional British values is under the constant threat of police arrest and even imprisonment. Uh, my guest tonight is one of those facing such persecution. Uh, Jolene Bunting is a Northern Irish Unionist who was in 2018 suspended from her democratically elected seat on the Belfast City Council for speaking against mass migration and Islamism. Uh, she was a supporter of Britain First when it was active. Uh, she is now facing imprisonment as a result of an injunction put on her by a HIV positive drag queen storytime reader, Matthew Caban, aka cherry on top whom she had protested against as part of parents against grooming since we don't want to give the authorities any reason to imprison jolene she cannot talk about her case or that particular drag queen story time reader but we will discuss uh, the grooming epidemic as a whole uh, the lack of free speech and borders in the uk as well as uh, northern irish politics jolene welcome to wilms front hi tim how are you i hope you're well I'm good. Uh, it's supposed to be spring uh, down under, though it's very wet uh, at the the moment. Uh, I covered on my on my show the apparent national emergency red alert uh, heat wave uh, that uh, apparently swept over uh, Britain a couple of months ago. Uh, was it that devastating? That how did you find it? Absolutely not. I loved it. I um, It was a proper summer. Uh, we are used to wet summers, um, no doubt about that, but um, it was absolutely fantastic to get a proper summer. Um, you guys in Australia, I know, have uh, wonderful summers. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, they are devastating, but um, there was no neg negative impact um, on me personally. Uh, and I, I haven't heard of any negative impacts. Of course, if you listen to the mainstream media, it was terrible, but um, we expect that from them. Uh, there, there, have, uh, there wasn't any of these, what is it, thousands of excess uh, deaths that were forecast by some meteorologists. Oh, we are definitely having thousands of excess deaths, but it's nothing to do with the weather. Um, we, 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 we all know why we're having excess deaths. It's happening worldwide. Um, uh, but they, they, if they want to put it down to the weather, they will. Um, and the sooner people switch off mainstream media, um, the better because they are pushing a narrative that is dangerous and is costing us lives. And of course, more people die in the cold than the, the heat. And uh, was that I, I was also told that uh, although you have heating for, for winter, uh, the big issue is whether it'll work uh, this winter. But apparently the reason why the summer was so bad is because you'd never heard of or don't have things called air conditioning. No, we don't. We don't have air conditioning because we don't need air conditioning. And as I say, in the summer, it wasn't that warm. You know, it was warm. It was a it was a drier summer than we're used to. 
but it wasn't that warm. Um, I don't think there's need for next summer for us to get our conditioning in. Um, I think a lot of people um, went out and bought nice fans and, you know, they, they had their fans going when they were indoors, but most people were um, able to cool themselves down quite fine. Um, and I think, you know, um, the hype around how warm it was, um, was blown all out of proportion. So going to the, the the winter, where, as I was mentioning, more people die in the, the cold, but uh, this is, it's a, what is it, well, it's a government-created uh, problem. And so one of uh, Liz Truss's uh, first announcement as Prime Minister was a, a energy a price energy freeze for households over the next two years because... Uh, my reading of it is that energy prices have quadrupled uh, for the average Brit over the, the past year, which is is just insane. Over the last few months, um, we have seen our energy bills skyrocket. Um, what I will say is that the government are um, trying to mitigate this. Um, and in reality, what we need to do is we need to sort out the Russia-Ukraine um, issue um, and we need to stop taking sides with with, with uh, Ukraine and we need to um, speak to Russia and we need to, to sort this energy crisis out because the reality is it's a self-made energy crisis. We have, we have not been fracking our own energy, our own oils and our own gases. Um, and now we are dependent on other countries. And when the, the war with Russia and Ukraine um, blew up, we have now put ourselves into a crisis. Um, I am glad that Liz Truss has um, said that we can frack now, um, although she's doing new turns now so i don't know where the british people are going to be this winter um and it's certainly a little too late for for um for most people um to get the energy this winter however it is good that we are going to be energy sufficient self sufficient when it comes to energy um and i think we should have always been self-sufficient i believe that each country needs to be self-sufficient and never rely on another country um because our people vote for our government um, and we can't rely on other people to vote for the for a government that isn't going to be tyrannic, tyrannical in their policies um, and at any point we could have to withdraw support for certain countries um, and I don't believe for one second that we should depend on any country um, other than our own country to uh, to feed us or to heat our homes um, or, or to provide our energy. Um, I think this global um, agreement that we have been led into over the last, you know, what, five decades, um, whether it's the European Union, whether it's NATO, whether it's um, the UN, we need to get out of that um, as soon as possible um, because we are finding that government after government um, in Europe are turning into dictatorships. Um, and the European Union is, uh, it, it's, uh, it's an authoritarian regime. And I'm so glad that we left, but we are still linked in so many other ways. And the sooner we, we are able to be more independent, um, rely on the Commonwealth, then that that's going to be um, when Br the British people will say that they are free. Uh, even though uh, the United Kingdom has left the European Union, as you mentioned, it's still part of of NATO. Uh, Liz Truss was the the foreign foreign secretary before she became prime minister, and she is pretty determined to just give Ukraine whatever uh, support it needs to continue whatever is the end game of this conflict and continue to, to sanction Russia. And then there's also the, uh, the Council uh, for Europe, which is another separate body, which is why the uh, Johnson 
government at the time just gave up on its uh, on its prom uh, pledge to uh, deport uh, illegal boat arrivals to Rwanda and well you mentioned the the UN as well there's a and doesn't Liz Truss hasn't she been to the World Economic Forum a number of times yeah um Liz Truss is only in the job I understand the the intensity of what she is having to deal with um so you know I, I don't want the cast any assertions on on the new prime minister um however i do believe that she's a world economic forum puppet and will do whatever they um their agenda is which we um have seen time and time again is not um is not friendly to the the people um whether that's in in the uk or whether that's um further afield people are not um the the world economic forum is not um human friendly um we know that because bill gates is working with them um and bill gates is, has said that we need to depopulate the earth so you know the reality is we know what liz trust has has got herself involved in i just hope that um she she does the right thing by the british people i don't believe that this prime minister is going to be the one who sorts the issues out um you say that we have left the European Union. Unfortunately, Tim, um, Northern Ireland hasn't left the European Union, and although we're part, we're supposed to be part of the UK. Um, we've been left in the in the European Union while the rest of the Great Britain left. Um, and we how does that work? Well, they have this thing called the protocol, and basically they've put a border between Northern Ireland and the UK. Um, and really, we we are British in name only. Um, we we are now have more close close ties with the Republic of Ireland, a failing state. Um, so. Uh, they they have put the border between us um what what it has resulted in is people having to pay more for their goods that are coming from the inland uk um it has resulted in businesses having to pay um for checks that um that shouldn't be there because they are moving goods from one part of the uk to another part of the uk um there is developments in this all the time um Liz Trust is has has said that she is going to deal with the protocol. Um, however, I'll not hold my breath on that because Boris Johnson also said he said that he would die in a ditch before there would be a border down the Irish Sea, and um, he put a border down the Irish Sea. So we need to. Um, so we are stuck with European bureaucracy um while the rest of the uk has left the european union does that so that means it's easier to trade and travel to a foreign country in the republic of ireland from northern ireland rather than the uk which you're supposed to be in mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's it's easy um travel um we still have the the free travel arrangements free movement um arrangements which isn't uh causing too much of an issue um thankfully for people traveling to and from uh the mainland for work um we have never had any barriers um between northern ireland and the republic of ireland um and it's something that has been discussed well, would we have to put up a border um between northern ireland and the republic um However, we did have uh, we did have an arrangement before the European Union came in, so I don't see how we can't have free trade and free movement of people between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland with a um, having to put a border um, anywhere, whether that's the Irish Sea or on the the Republic of Ireland's border. But the EU have insisted that we need checks because they want to punish us. Um, and instead of Britain saying, fine, you do the checks because we're not getting involved, they have gone along with this madness and they have put the border down the Irish Sea, annexing us from the, the mainland um, and really putting the union in great jeopardy. Uh, to just uh, clarify for our audience, the full name of the Conservative Party is the Conservative and 
unionist is in their name as as well and obviously they were the the, the party that let the uh, the british public uh to decide whether they wanted to be in the european union and were in charge of uh, negotiating the exit and based on what you've told me they it's it hasn't led to it, it, they haven't lived up to the unionist part of their name tim the problem is when it was it was really trees may had um done the negotiations boris kind of went along with it um but the reality is that unless you have a vision um as prime minister on how this would work they were never going to get the right solution um and unless you believe in britain you're not going to get the right solution. And the problem is we had a, a state with David Cameron, with Theresa May. Um, Boris was a little better, but not much better, um, that they didn't believe in, in Britain and they, they they forgot how strong a nation we once were. Um, and looking around in, in the UK today, I can see why you would forget how strong of a nation we were because there are whole areas that have been transformed into to look and feel like you're in a third world country however we have we are simply uh going through the the motions of this and we need someone a prime minister who has a backbone who's going to stand up for the british people and unfortunately we haven't had that um and i don't think we're going to find that in this trust maybe maybe um i hope i'm wrong but um i don't think liz trust is going to be as strong as we need her to be why are you a, a unionist or uh, another term for it is is loyalist which term do you prefer i use both um i, I am both and I, I'm a unionist, I'm a loyalist, um, simply, it's very simple, what else is going to, to come of this? If we leave the UK, we are not going to be in a better position than we are today. I know the UK government have, have with without a doubt, um, driven our, our nation into deep distress um however i don't believe for one minute that uh we can come out of this um when we put the british resolve and the the the, the great british um work ethic to, into play i believe that we can get ourselves out of this um however if we leave the uk um or the uk separates what we'll find is small nations that are weak and we will will find that the likes of the European Union and other um, sinister groups will come in and they will try to take over our, our small nations, our small our small countries if we separate from the United Kingdom. Um, I think we're in a better position staying with, with our brothers and sisters in Scotland, England and Wales. Um, and I don't believe for one minute that independent or part of the republic of ireland um is even an option and i don't think anyone um in northern ireland would disagree with me to say that that our our nation would be stronger in the republic or as independent it certainly seems well this is how it's uh reported it internationally that uh Sinn Féin is in the ascendancy both in the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And uh, Michelle uh, O'Neill, who's the, the the vice president of, of Sinn Féin, is poised to become the, the first minister of, of Northern Ireland. And she was, uh, during the, uh, the European summer, uh, she went to, to meet with Nancy Pelosi in the US, who's a, an Italian, 
Catholic and uh, managed to uh, conv convince her to to have a no uh, no trade deal with Britain in a pact with with Sinn Fein, and we had down in Australia uh, Mary Lou uh, Macdonald. Uh, she gave a speech to our national press club uh, where she well, made a uh, implored uh, Irish Australian tradies to to come home. And uh, and to uh, come back to the 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 modern island that that they're building. Um, I mean, Sinn Féin shouldn't be in government. Full stop. They are the political wing of the IRA, and they should never have been allowed into government. So, um, so you know, the fact that uh, Michelle O'Neill could be first minister disgusts me. Tim, it really, it really is harrowing to think that these people um, who she supports and has um, countless times um, been completely unapologetic about, um, who murdered my family and friends, um, are in government. So, so I want to make that very clear. They should not be in government. Full stop. Um, they're not only in government, but they have joined the global anti-British cabal that um, we see time and time again who want to destroy the the British the British um, the the British strength, and they want to to use their um, power to ensure that the people the, the small people stay small. Um, so the fact that, that Michelle O'Neill went to Nancy Pelosi is, and, and for people who don't understand Northern Irish politics, um, it's very simple. Um, Sinn Féin are, um, would say with the Democratic Party in the US, um, and Unionists would be siding with the Republicans, although it's the, the opposite um, terminology when it is in the UK, um, they are part of an anti-British cabal who want to destroy the UK. Um, Tim, we have seen it for so long where um, Sinn Féin's policies are the opposite from the policy. Uh, Sinn Féin policy in Northern Ireland is opposite from their policy in the Republic of Ireland because they want to destroy Northern Ireland. They want Northern Ireland to be, um, to. they want to use Northern Ireland politics to bankrupt the United Kingdom and they want to ensure that we are not um, an asset for the United Kingdom um, and that is all part and plan of them getting their so-called United Ireland. Um, I don't believe for one minute it will happen. If it does happen, I believe that it will be the UK will have to go in and save the, the, the Republic of Ireland. Um, because their their nation has been completely transformed as well. You know, we do have issues um, with immigration, migration and an invasion um, in the UK. However, the Republic of Ireland have the exact same issue. It's a lot smaller um, and they the, their people ha, are so have turned so liberal and turned their backs on on what they used to be they used to be such a a good christian country um but they have turned their backs on that and they they have done a 360 and they are now so liberal um that they can't see that the invasions happening in the republic of ireland and small small towns in the republic of ireland um the the indigenous people are being outnumbered um by the these illegal immigrants coming in and um, placed there by their government uh, because a a lot of people might not uh, uh, understand, like looking from afar, that uh, even though uh, Sinn Féin calls itself a, a Irish Republican Nationalist Party, in Celtic nations, the Nationalist parties are left wing. The Scottish National uh, Party, uh, which wants uh, Scottish independence, is left wing and supports all of the liberal, uh, progressive, postmodern, anti-free speech, open borders, uh, EU, and, and, and Sinn Féin is, is very left-wing and social justice in their 
uh, manifesto, and they've been part of the radical transformation of the the Republic of Ireland from a conservative nation to, well, a a a very a uh, left liberal nation. They they are a Marxist. Both Sinn Féin and the SNP are Marxist globalists who want to destroy the United Kingdom um, and they will stop at nothing to do so. Um, we have seen Nicola Sturgeon call for another independence referendum. No means no and that's a, you know, it, it was an extremely hard, um, hard campaign to fight, um, the no campaign in Scotland um, and still the no campaign won. And Nicola Sturgeon is just going to continue um, to, to try to call for another referendum until she is is removed from power. Um, and the sooner that these people are removed from power, the better. Um, and, and and the only way that we can we can remove these people from power, well, we don't have a choice in Northern Ireland, but at least in Scotland you can remove the SNP from power, um, is that if, if all those people who don't vote get out and vote because Tim we have a serious um, voter apathy in the UK where the good people don't like their politicians so they will not go and vote and that is how the SNP, how Sinn Féin have got more votes the, than the good conservative parties. Um, it's simply because the, the conservative parties um, uh, and are they're not morally complete let's put it like that you know they they have a long history of being corrupt they have a long history of backtracking on their 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 manifestos they have a long history of not sticking to their words and doing new terms um and until people start to to use their vote to vote for conservative parties, we are stuck with these Marxist globalists um, trying to push their power um, on the United Kingdom. And if it means an end to devolved government, I would fully support it because it isn't working. Um, devolved government ha has not worked in the United Kingdom. And if it means giving the power back to the Westminster, um, I would certainly support that. If it, if it, if it gets these Marxist globalists to stop pushing this agenda which is being pushed all around the world um and you, you know so in australia better than most the uh, the covid uh, restrictions they were way more severe in in scotland and wales i'm not were they more severe in in northern ireland than compared to uh england um and, and the, the the covid restrictions um I'll be honest with you, Tim, I didn't stick to them. Uh, I wasn't, I, it really didn't affect me much. I worked the whole way through. Um, I went to supermarkets. I, I didn't, I've never wore a mask. Um, I've flown to England and back and, and never worn a mask. Um, while they were severe, they weren't really enforced in Northern Ireland. Um, and I think it was too hard of a job to enforce them. Um, and thankfully, the, they, they weren't too enforced. Obviously, everything was closed um, and it really wasn't a great situation, especially for small businesses. We lost a lot of small businesses. Um, the area of the which I represented when I was elected um, is just a small um, road with little small shops, old, old fashioned shops, I suppose you would call them now, um, where they are, they're, they're little shops that aren't making much profit. They um, are there for the community and they are very community, community orientated. And we, we seen a lot of shops closing, um, something that we couldn't really afford to, to happen um, because that, that means dereliction. And when the dereliction sets in, um, it, it, it has an impact on the other small businesses as well that haven't closed. Um, it really isn't a great situation at all um, after lockdown. However, what I will say is um, we were lucky to be in in Northern Ireland because I know that, um, I mean, Australia, I kept a close eye on you guys mm. over there. Um, it was my heart, horrible. My heart breaks for you and I know that um, there, there's there been a bill recently to force people to get the, vac the vaccine um, and you're going to see so many excess deaths through that. Um, but 
as you say, I think it was more a policing problem that it wasn't enforced. I don't believe, um, I, I don't think that the 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 rules were any le more lenient. Um, I think just the police can cope with the amount of people who were breaking it. Uh, 2020 and 2021 was horrific. Well, I, I was, uh, uh, well, I'm still in Melbourne, Victoria, where we were, what is it, under severe lockdown for 262 uh, days. Uh, thankfully, in 2022, the both the entire COVID apparatus and narrative has fully collapsed in Australia. That we hardly ha we we hardly have any uh, remaining vaccine mandates. Even the the unvax now can travel into and out to uh, Australia. Uh, but it it took a couple of years for people start to 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 wake up, and when they we all started to get COVID at the beginning of 2022. We're just like, oh, that all what we were worried about for. Like we have here in this state a really uh, far left socialist premier in, in in Dan Andrews. So, I mean, what would you expect from from somebody uh, like him? But uh, the thing about uh, the the UK's uh, lockdowns was that all happened under a conservative uh government uh boris johnson went went along with the the, the science tm and going back to the problems that uh, all the problems that the uk is facing now uh conservatives have been in power for for, for 12 years and things have just gotten worse the reality is that they're only conservative by name. they're not they're, they're not conservative in nature they're not their their policies um while their, their manifesto uh, may set out conservative policies. They don't enforce the conservative policies. Um, and I, I'm, I'm glad that Liz Truss has actually come in and she has started to focus on, on the businesses that um, employ and generate money because, um, I mean, we, we are turning into a socialist state here in the UK. We are, you know, the government seems to be just handing out money. Like, um, I, everyone uh, on, on benefits, on certain benefits, got £326 and we're due to get another £326 in November. Um, you know, how is our government able to sustain that as well as bringing every, anyone who wishes to come to the UK, into the UK, ho housing them, hating them, feeding them? Um, how can our government possibly afford to do that um the only way they're they're able to do this is by getting themselves into debt and it's our children that are going to suffer for this um because when a truly conservative um uh government come in they are going to cut the 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 socialism out and our our children are going to suffer um so you know, I'm really weary that our government are getting are racking up debts of um, billions of pounds, which my my children and my grandchildren are going to have to pay um, with their taxes, and they're going to have to work harder harder um, to pay off this debt. Um, and the social the socialist uh, mindset needs to stop in the United Kingdom. Um, otherwise, we are going to destroy our nation. But they, the, the conservatives um, are, are allowing this to happen and it's simply trying to grab votes. You cannot be all things to all men. Um, and the, the sooner we have a prime minister who realizes that, um, the better, because sometimes you have to make enemies to ensure um, the future of the country and the nation is secure. I mean, you... Uh, it, it... I'll just play this clip from the other day. The uh, conservatives, they, 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 they have been doing all these uh, big, have all had these uh, big government programs spending, including on the, the NHS, trying to get through the NHS uh, ba uh, backlog. And then there's this uh, nurse, uh, Miranda Hughes, who says this. If you are there to do a job as a compassionate person, mm -hmm. there are no resources and you are told persistently on the news that you know care homes are being ring fenced 
it's, it's a lie, and I'm sorry, but if you have voted Conservative, you do not deserve to be resuscitated by the NHS. Ooh, hang, on, hang on. That's the most disgusting thing I think I've heard this year. It makes me so angry, although I'm not surprised, Tim. Um, being, a, you know, um, quite controversial myself, I have had you know all sorts of people saying the most obscene things you know uh, yeah you don't expect that from a nurse you expect a nurse to be compassionate um and and um you, you expect her to to see that life is is precious um but she obviously doesn't think so um and i'm so glad that she has been sacked from the nhs however for well, years she actually worked for a private hospital so she's supposedly a champion of the nhs but she worked for a private hospital and was well, sacked for bringing it into disrepute well um the the nhs with so much money uh, actually uh given private hospitals the money to treat patients um technically she probably works for the nhs um because the reality is that the nhs is not for, for purpose and they have had to to um contract private private uh hospitals and private private uh, uh private consultants um to deal with um the backlog um, so she was probably dealing with NHS patients um, quite often. And as I say, for years, I have worried that if I were to take ill and go to the hospital, that I could get someone who doesn't agree with my politics because the left are so... Tim, I'm sure we don't agree on everything. Um, if we, we have a conversation about something that we don't agree on, we'll move on. We'll still speak to each other. When, the, when it's the left, the left don't seem to to understand that everyone's entitled to their opinion. So what, what, what we find is that um, if you don't agree with my opinion, I'm subhuman and and you don't want, you don't want to speak to me. I shouldn't be allowed to work. I shouldn't be allowed to to make a living. Um, I've had I've had numerous people saying that um i shouldn't be allowed my children that's the that's the reality of what the left um the, the mindset that the left have uh got and and the, let's face it when you go to the hospital you aren't are you safe when you are going to the hospital as a well-known conservative I don't believe so. Uh, it does worry me that if I were to take take ill and have to go to the hospital, um, that I wouldn't get the best care possible because people know my my politics, um, and that shouldn't be the case at all. Um, that's not freedom. Uh, you're exactly right about. Uh, well, I've received uh, similar uh, messages from the so-called uh, tolerant, caring left and. They, they they want you dead. They they want you to uh, commit suicide or just crawl up in a ball, ball at the least crawl up in a ball and just never take part in in, in public life uh, again. I mean, they they are truly some of the uh, the the most abusive, uh, cruelest, and hateful people I've ever come across. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think we've seen that time and time again. Um, and it comes directly from the mainstream media. Uh, more and more people, um, the, the more you watch, you can kind of um, see how these people get their mindset because they, they are watching the BBC. They are watching um, other, other channels, Channel 4, Channel 5, um, where they have this liberal... Uh, outset and they, they are watching these dramas where life doesn't really matter um, and I do believe that it is a globalist agenda to have people in that mindset that life does not matter people don't appreciate um, how precious life is these days um, especially on the left um, and we see that through abortion we see that through um, you know e even close family members who I would have thought were quite conservative um, are starting to speak about, you know, overpopulation um, and, and what, what we should do about overpopulation because that's the narrative that is being pushed by the media. Um, and 
the reality is that there is more than enough um, resources on the earth um, to to feed and to, to house the population. It just needs to be managed properly. Um, and I believe that it's being mismanaged in order to create a crisis. We get here in Australia, BBC News and Sky News UK. Uh, Sky News UK is so bad with Kay Burley, uh, uh, Beth uh, Rigby. Um, I mean, she, she is just so anti-conservative, uh, like she was already sticking the boot into Liz Truss as soon as she was uh, elected, and the other one, uh, Sophie Ridge. But even the, the so-called right-wing media that uh, you have in the, the UK, uh, there's well, now GB News and, and Talk TV, there's websites such as uh, uh, Spiked Online and Unheard, but would they ever defend uh, the free speech of somebody like you? Would they defend Mark Collette, uh, Alex Belfield, who's now in prison for, for, for five years just for saying mean things about people online? Have they ever given you favourable coverage, these, the, the, these so-called, uh, what is it, intellectual dark web uh, news websites and uh, other news networks? Tim, what I've found is that the 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 mainstream media um, they try their best to ignore me completely. Um, however, obviously with with the current the ongoing court case, um, I was very close to being imprisoned um, for for breaching a court order, and all the all the mainstream media covered it, um, but GB News didn't cover it at all. Um, which I found really surprising. Um, now, I, I know that they have had similar cases on. Um, I have emailed them. I have contacted them to say, you know, have you seen this? You know, have you seen what's going on? Um, and they are just ignoring me. So even, you know, um, these so-called right-leaning media outlets, they, they are they're ignoring me, um, even when the mainstream media aren't ignoring me. Um, in fairness, I think the mainstream media just wanted to paint me in a bad light. Um, I think that that was their purpose because when I I obviously didn't go to prison, um, they didn't cover it um, even um, half of the extent that they have co had covered that I may go to prison. Um, they didn't clear my name, um, and it is about dragging my name through the mud. Uh, GB News isn't dragging my name through the mud, but they're also not supporting us. I, the reason why I mentioned uh, Alex Belfield, I'm not sure what your your views are on on him, but I found him uh, extremely uh, entertaining. The only uh, notable media outlet that covered his imprisonment was uh, BBC News, which it was BBC News personalities that all brought the stalking charges uh, against him. And this is probably one of the most alarming things about the UK that you can spend more time in prison than a pedophile murderer rapist for offending someone, saying something that's uh, against the multicultural LGBT uh, agenda. The police don't seem to solve actual crimes, but they'll, they'll bust down your door if you misgender somebody. Tim, what what I have found personally is that the police just don't care. Um, they are more. Uh, they don't. They. I, I remember once a family member had a bench stolen from the, from their garden, and I was still a counsellor at the time. And I phoned the police, and uh, I says, you know, what's going on about this? You know, what are you doing about this? Are you investigating? That? And they basically says they weren't, they weren't investigating that. But at the same time, they, they um, have been out at my door multiple times regarding um, hurty words on Twitter. Um, and I actually um, had the police at the door, and th this, this is um, another drag queen. Um, my, my children were forced to see a drag queen. and Your I children were forced? Yeah, I took the kids to a Queen's Jubilee party, um, family fun day, and there was a drag queen entertainment there. No no warning of a drag queen being the children's wow. 
and um and my my little girl said to me mommy there's a bum and i said i, I kind of looked up and was like what nurse that and i told them to go with their grand but they followed me anyway um and uh they seen this drag queen so i took a to, took a picture of this public performer um and I, I put how angry I was that my children were forced to see this drag queen performing for children. Um, and the police came out to me within three days um, and they they cautioned me for having the, the picture up, even though this was a public performer yeah. and I had taken the picture myself. They cautioned me and told me I should have I should take the picture down. I refused, obviously, to take the picture down. And there is no further action on it. I ever it's intimidation, you know, coming out to my, my home with my two young children to tell me to take a picture down that isn't illegal. Um, while they won't investigate theft, they won't investigate even murder. Um, we have, obviously, the IRA are still quite active in uh, Northern Ireland. And we have so many unsolved murders um, that, that the police aren't investigating any longer. Um, and and yeah, the, the, these police officers find the time to come out and speak to me about a, a picture that's on, which isn't illegal um, and isn't offensive to, to anyone other than, you know, um, people who, who don't agree that I should have my own opinion. Um, so the police seem to, seem to have plenty of time for her to Twitter uh, Twitter. Uh, posts while they are able to harass con conservatives uh, if we give them an inch and that's something that I'm really concerned you know obviously when we are talking about um, drag queen uh, drag queens in, in general I am worried that the judge will um, and the courts will use that against me in order to imprison me um, and we uh, you know we have to watch and uh, same as yourself Tim we have to watch every word we say because if we um, if we don't if we say a word out of line and they have um, they have the ability to put us in prison they will um, because they want us to disappear they want conservatives and christians to disappear off the face of the earth and if um if they could ban the bible i, I genuinely think they would um because they are so anti um conservative anti-christian anti the the morals and the 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 uh, strength that the British people had to build such an amazing nation um, and nations all around the world. They are opposed to that because they don't want um, good people to have that strength anymore. One of our uh, most well-known patriot activists uh, here uh, in Melbourne, Neil Erickson, he's currently on his second uh, prison uh, term for uh, disrupting uh, religious worship, which was a, a, a gay church. He went into uh, this gay church service. Uh, he uh, they, he said he wanted to speak. They granted him permission to speak and, well, basically told them, uh, how come you marry these these people, which is which is against the the, the Bible. He's in prison for, for 40 days. He previously was in prison for 30 days for uh, disrupting Islamic prayers at Federation Square, which is a public square in, in Melbourne, where he said uh, Muhammad is a is a false prophet. It was that was a public uh, space. So he in total has spent 70 days in in prison for hurtful words. And my husband was in uh, Belfast City Centre just yesterday, um, or Tuesday it was, sorry, and he was disgusted because there was a street preacher um, preaching the Bible and there were these teens um, from the LGBT ally community and they run around Belfast City Centre with um, the the rainbow flag around them and they uh, they are constantly shouting over these street preachers um, and they, they put rainbow flags in their bags and in their pockets and things like this um, and there is no action taken on them so I'm absolutely horrified to hear um, that Neil has, has had to um, endure this um, but more power to him because he is doing God's work and his rewards will be in heaven um, and I truly believe that um, but 
we we need to get get a grip on this. We need to we need to um, look at our judicial systems, and we need to ensure that um, judges aren't able to put conservatives to into prison for the most obscene reasons. Um, Alex is, is one. Um, we have had other patriots who have done very very little and have had to serve. Um, Prison time with class A category A prisoners. Um, Tommy which... Robinson, uh, for well, filming outside a court like the mainstream media do. Yeah, I, uh, as you say, as I, I was associated with Britain First um, for for a while, and I spent time with um, I, I actually at the trial of J Jada and Paul and uh, basically what they were in prison for was um, they they went to these paedophiles house and told him to come out and speak to them and wanted to interview him um, and because his wife and children were in uh, were in the house it was seen that they were harassing the wife and children um and the, the judge you know um summarized and i i was convinced when when he was summarizing that they were walking free that day um and then he said but in my opinion this was a uh, this is to do with the race and you know and and the judge then summarized and ended up giving them time in prison uh, and most of that was spent with category A prisoners with murderers and rapists um, which for me it was completely bizarre um, after sitting through the trial and hearing the evidence um, but the reality is that the judiciary have the power there um, to to take all us conservatives um, off the air and if they can they will um, I believe that the 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 court the the case that I'm going through is um, an attempt to silence me I refuse to be silenced I won't be silent um, when it comes to endangering children um, and you know and I think that the majority of conservatives who are speaking out um understand that we are going to be persecuted um but we will we, we are prepared to endure that um for the greater good uh jada franson obviously hasn't uh been uh deterred so she's now uh with the british freedom party which nick griffin is also uh, part of uh, so they have streams at uh, purge dot uh, TV uh, so the, the, the these uh, longtime activists uh, the, the 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 state has obviously tried to 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 do their worst uh, you were on Mark Collette's show last week uh, the state has and the mainstream media have been at him for uh 20 uh plus years and patriotic alternative just seems to be going from uh strength to strength it seems it's great because the great british public um are waking it up bit by bit um so no matter what the the mainstream media um or or, or the judiciary do um they seem to be giving themselves own goals because time and time again, like, it, it, people realize what is going on. Um, and, you know, I, I have said if um, I end up in prison, I end up in prison. I have two young kids and I, I would like to think that um, the judiciary would, would be favorable for, for that and not imprison me. However, I am, um, I, I am, I suppose controversial um, in in what I say um, because no one is speaking about the issues that really matter to the great British public, um, and even you know these these people who live in the bubble. And I know um, they're in every aspect of society where they live in the bubble. And until something really is at their front door, they will not speak out against it, and they won't. Um, they don't realize the severity of it. Um, but even those people are starting to come out of their bubble and say there's something seriously wrong um, when when people are being pro pro prosecuted um, simply for speaking their opinion. Um, and I think 
cases like Alex, um, Jada and Tommy Robinson and even myself, um, it really does highlight how um, tough it is for for people like myself who put their head above the parapet. And Tim, I I don't hate anyone. I don't I don't wish harm on anyone. I'm completely anti violence. I'm a Christian, uh, and my my belief is the is all written down in the Bible. Um, and I believe the the um that uh we need to treat these people kindly um even if they do have an opinion that's different from mine i will speak to them i will set up my opinion and i won't waver on that um but they're entitled to their opinion and i think we we should be debating more and um but i don't believe that the left can debate um because the problem is that they will lose every time because um, the conservative argument is so strong. Um, but I do think that the more conversations we have, um, the more people who will realize what is going on with these globalist the, these globalist agendas, which have been forced on us and are now being forced on our children. Uh, we just had uh, Nigel Farage uh, tour uh, Australia, and when he was uh, speaking at uh, CPAC uh, Australia, he decided to try and have a conversation with one of these socialist Antifa uh, protesters. I played it on my last show, and the, the protester basically said, you're still wearing a mask outside, uh, said, uh, we're not here for a debate, we're here to uh, shut you down because you're trying to take away people's rights. You just came out and said it that's what his goal was yeah yeah you know these people just want to shut us down and that's the reality of it i want to give these people a platform um because i believe that when they start talking um uh, people will see right through their argument and uh, you know and i have i've watched uh these anti-fat types um they, they, they try to debate and then they actually um end up coming around to 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 uh your argument and you're kind of you, you kind of look at them and, and kind of think you have no idea why you're a, you're active in this field um you have no idea uh what the what reality is actually going on um and and you know you, you ask them did you know about this or did you know about that and and they have no idea they seem to be stuck in a in in a bubble um and as i say you know we have these people who are stuck in their family bubble and you know and and they go to work they come home they don't uh they don't look at politics they don't look at the news um but we 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 also have these uh left-wing liberals who are stuck in this liberal bubble who um can't see that there is evil in this world that is trying to depopulate the earth who is trying who are trying to um force sinister agendas on us um and they they do, they don't realize it and when you present them with the evidence they um they they're stuck and they can't argue um and that's when you get the you're racist you're homophobe you're you're um you're ugly is one that i get quite often um you're fat um you should be yeah they just uh they, they just uh degenerate into just name calling i mean i've yeah. seen that they they pick at your uh appearance they make assumptions uh, about your personal private life they just become like schoolyard uh, schoolyard bullies mean girls yeah that's exactly what they do um and you know at that point you know that you've defeated their argument i stopped debating on twitter because i was i was going on the twitter and making a point and the next minute you know you had all these bots coming on and it, it is just mm. personal insults and it's just pointless um trying to debate with some people um but but i do believe that we can um speak sense to a lot of people um who will come around from this uh dysphoria um which we're facing um from especially millennials you know we have so many young people who are um who are entrenched in this agenda and this ideology um 
who um, and we really need to deal with that um and i do i do think they'll grow out of it i do believe that when they have their own children and they they see the future that they are leaving to their children um they might change their their opinions um but unfortunately i fear that that will be too late um so as i say you know the the left um don't really have an argument they don't have have um a solid argument to, to come at us with um and they they are like children they they um they don't know what they're talking about but they'll continue to talk about it um and having a, a seven-year-old i know exactly um how that works with children um and i can i can see the similarities between the left and you know my seven-year-old who who talks about things that he has no idea what he's talking about uh, we've got a couple of questions on entropy from uh account i'm a stupid moron i don't know why they pick that account but they're a regular super chatter uh so i'm i'm grateful for their for their uh support uh first question uh for three australian dollars what does jolene think of the infighting in the uk nationalist scene seems like civil war between ethno versus civics Oh, it's it's an absolute nightmare Tim and that comes from this you know there there is absolutely you know conservative national I don't I, I don't like the word nationalist because it means something completely different mm -hmm. in Northern Ireland uh, but but it does come from this the, this thing that you're not allowed your own opinion and if, if someone has a different opinion from you you should fight them um, and we also have these egos that um, that if I'm not the leader, no one's the leader, you know, and no, you shouldn't be allowed to, uh, you shouldn't be allowed to, your your opinion. Um, and I believe they all need a good shake. Um, um, their heads bang together. Um, and look at the bigger picture. Um, but the reality is that I, I don't believe for one minute that the people who are starting these arguments and, and fighting, um, I, I don't believe for one minute that they are are what's good for the UK or um, the nation. Um, I believe that, that those people should, should for the greater good, um, take a back seat and allow people who genuinely care about the nation to take over. Uh, uh, recently, Anne-Marie Waters uh, shut down for Britain which was an explicitly civil nationalist group. And uh, she lobbed uh, a few uh, uh, attack videos at uh, Mark Collette and, and Patriotic Alternative. I'm not sure if uh, you had any dealings with, with her or uh, for Britain. Yeah, I have, I have contacted Amory Waters um, quite a bit um, on Twitter, really. We were, we, we, would have had conversations um on twitter just um really you know i think again um ray waters will i wouldn't have agreed with her on a lot of her policies um however i don't believe that her agenda was sinister um and i think the the amount of uh persecution that for Britain faced was was a lot um and I don't think that it's a bad thing that for Britain has gone um there are multiple um nationalist parties um who are doing great work and I would like to see them all team up together I know that their policies don't um always um join um however if they could work together um for the greater good that would be absolutely fantastic but in order for that to work we need egos put aside um and we need people to to um who genuinely care about the nation um and care about the the future um to put uh, to put their differences aside and work with people who don't agree with them on everything but you know the reality is i'm looking at, at some of these parties and thinking what is the difference between this party and this party um let's let's have the discussion and i, I do believe that there's a lot of egoistic um e egoistic people who are 
our influence in all these nationalist movements. And I think we need what we need to do is um, get together and work together and ensure that we are doing what's best for the nation, not what's best for our pockets or for our ego. The other super chat question uh, from I'm a stupid moron for three Australian dollars is, well, we mentioned Tommy Robinson before, but it's uh, what does Jolene think of, of Tommy Robinson? He certainly, I know that he still posts on Telegram, but in terms of in person, he's been relatively quiet recently. I think Tommy, um, I think Tommy has done great work in the past. Um, it, it's it's so refreshing to see um, an English man actually grow a set um, because I, for one, um, are quite I'm quite skeptical of English men who have allowed their country to get to the state that it is. Um, so it is um, good to see Tommy standing up and speaking out. However, um, there is a lot of questions I have for, for, for Tommy Robinson. Um, and I think recently his uh, his activity has been, been doing more harm to the nationalist movement than it has been good. A decade ago, uh, Tommy was, well, he, he was my red pill, to, to use uh, an expression. He was the one who articulated, look, you can't have this postmodern uh, liberal society if you're having mass migration from uh, particularly these Islamic uh, countries, which have a, a very uh, anti-liberal anti-free uh, philosophy and and mindset. And he saw his own town, Luton, uh, change demographically in front of uh, uh, his eyes. And one of the the, the cities that's uh, been in the news uh, because of uh, ethnic violence is is Leicester. With it, is it still going? The 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 riots between the uh, Indians and Pakistani immigrants. Yeah, well, I think that that actually has been going on for months. Um, I think it really flared um, over last week. Um, that was really the height of it. Um, but I, I think this is going to go on for a long time until um, uh, until it's dealt with. Um, and you know, this is this is the issue with mass uncontrolled immigration, is that there has been whole uh, areas within not only the England, but Scotland, Wales, Ireland, uh, and even here in Northern Ireland, we have seen whole areas taken over by um, mostly illegal immigrants um, who see no, they see no other way but violence, and that's the reality of it. Um, we need to uh, catch a grip, and I do believe that this, that's ongoing, but we, we had the we had the Muslims and the Hindus fighting in Leicester, Le Leicester. Um, but then we it moved up to London, and we had uh, Sikhs and Sunni Muslims um, rioting with each other there as well. Um, you know, and and violence on the streets again. Um, and I, it has quietened at the minute, but I don't believe that's the end of it. I, I think we have a lot more of that to come. And I know uh, uh, Nottingham, that's where uh, Alex is from, that's close to, to Leicester, having uh, uh, having the same sort of uh, demographic uh, change. And uh, Birmingham, Blackburn, those Midlands, uh, uh, north, uh, Northwest, uh, I, 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 when you were on with Mark uh, last week, he said London's already... Uh, Indigenous Brits are a minority. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I travelled over to London um, with a group of patriots, and we we had gone on a night. I actually think um, I, I was telling Mark this as well on his show. We we had gone on a night out, and I was shocked at the amount of um, you know foreign uh, nationals that were walking around, you know, ready for a night out. Um, and what happened was we were walking down the street and I seen a homeless guy and I thought to myself, he's the 
one English person that I have seen here. And I, I walked up to him and was like, how are you? Now this guy, he probably had had some alcohol, but he was perfectly um, sober and was able to have a conversation. And he heard my accent and he said, oh, that's a Belfast accent. I served in Northern Ireland. So this was a veteran um, lying on the streets. And I, I, I had a chat with him and his friend was a veteran also. And I looked across the street and I remember I, I said to my husband, I said, listen, if this is another veteran, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I walked over and I said, listen, do you want a cigarette? That, that's how I got the conversation started. And he went, that's a Belfast accent. I served in Northern Ireland. And all three men, the only three Englishmen that I had seen whilst the, on my travels, um, were f veterans who had served in Northern Ireland, um, and were living on the streets. And um, why all the while, um, there were foreign nationals walking past in 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 their get up to go go out to their nightclubs and and to enjoy their lives while these these veterans were lying on the street. And Tim, I couldn't control myself. I just burst into tears. I couldn't believe that England had got so bad, and that was part of London. Um, I couldn't believe how bad it had got. Um, and I see my 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 country um, getting worse by the week. And and you know, even the area which I live in, um, that's the, the the amount of foreign nationals now um, is completely unsustainable. Um, and they have started causing trouble with locals um which isn't going to go down well in northern ireland um but i have been kind of warning that this was coming because we've seen a play out in in england um where now the crime rate is is through the roof um and the police don't seem to have any control on the streets maybe if those veterans if they uh caught a dinghy to uh france and and back then maybe they could get some uh accommodation uh, and uh some uh food and and heating uh for uh the winter because this just blows my mind that because one thing we do get right in australia is that there is this now if there is any uh, illegal boats that try to make their way to Australia, they're immediately turned back. I mean, we have a left-wing Labor government now. They're, they're continuing uh, to have what's termed offshore processing, or it's called the, uh, it was originally called the uh, Pacific uh, Solution. Uh, it, is not, it is not tolerated at all, illegal boat arrivals, yet it happens almost every day in the, the UK and they get put up in these hotels. There was that recent, uh, I saw uh, one of Paul Joseph Watson's video about people having their weddings cancelled because some old uh, accommodation uh, castle manor is going to house uh, uh, illegal uh, dinghy divers. Yeah, um, there has been multiple weddings um, from really 2020. Uh, we have seen um, hotel after hotel being filled with illegal, uh, and, and we can call them uh, refugees because that's what they, they, that's what the mainstream media are calling them. The reality is that these are all fighting aged men. Hmm. Um, the, the, the majority of them are young men who are, are coming in these dinghies. They're not even women and children. If it was women and children, we might be a bit more sympathetic. But the reality is that they are all young fighting age men. Um, and they, they it's an invasion, really. Uh, 32,000 people this year so far. And that's the ones that we know of. That's the ones that have, they, they get a, a certain distance from France. Um, and once they cross over in the UK territory, we actually ha have um, boats which taxi them back. Um, and then they will, obviously they have no, no identification, um, but they'll be processed and they'll be sent to their five, four, four or five star hotels where they'll be, they'll have three meals a day. Um, obviously the, the, the hotel will be heated. They'll have, um, free, free water and electricity. Um, all the time, the British people, especially our, our pensioners, um, people who have had to retire from work for, for illnesses, um, are being treated um, like 
first class citizens, I can't say second class citizens because um, the British people are being um, treated like second class citizens. The, the elderly are being treated worse than, se than second class citizens. They are, I have never um, known a government to treat their older people as badly um, as the UK have in the in recent years with our elderly. Um, it breaks my heart um, when I when I speak to elderly people who are having to live on the pension who maybe need cars coming into their, their home. Um, those cars have 15 minutes um to tr to do whatever is needed in these elderly people's houses and get to the next elderly person um so even if they do get someone who is compassionate and current um th those people will will um be rushing in and rushing back out um and what it's resulting in is our old people are dying rapidly um and i believe that's part of the agenda um and uh, it's disgusting. It disgusts me that we are allowing illegal immigrants to come into our nation, to stay in our nation, um, while we are trying to kill off our, our old people, um, people who have paid into our society. Um, some, some of them, you know, um, were born during the war and we we are treating them worse than, than criminals. Um, and indeed, if they were criminals, they would be sent to prison, and again, at least they would have their three three meals a day and their heating and their electricity. Um, something that most elderly people in the UK are struggling to to keep this winter. Uh, it's a complete disgrace. Now, your previous Home Secretary, Pretty Patel, she was uh, pretty useless uh, when it came to border control, but uh, uh, your new Home Secretary, Suella uh, Braverman, she's promised to revi revive the Rwandan plan. This is what she told the uh, the Telegraph. The group is going on to a smaller group, a small boat that really annoys our readers, members here, I'm sure. Why can't you stop the small boats coming? It's a deeply entrenched and complex problem. That's a simple answer. And I would love to be here saying, well, claiming victory. I would love to be having a, a front page of the Telegraph yeah. with a, fly, a plane taking off to Rwanda. That's my dream. That's my dream. It's when my will obsession. that happen? Uh, sounds like a bit of a pipe dream at the moment. We'll see if he, because as you've said, they talk is cheap uh, from the Conservatives, but they don't do much. Yeah, uh, until um, she she decides to walk the walk, um, we'll take everything she says with pinch of salt. I hope that um, I hope that that Rwanda is. Um, back up and running as soon as possible. Um, I would love to see these people um, uh, removed from, from these hotels and to, to try and start getting weddings back on, on track. But the reality is that even if the Home Secretary wishes to send these people to Rwanda, well, what's going to happen is that they will um, take it to the court and the court will not allow it to happen, uh, which we have already seen. So the, what I think we need to do is is to repatriate these people into their own nations, um, you know, and if, if they are, which I don't believe that a lot of them are, but if they are fleeing war songs, we need to to um to send them back to rebuild their 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 own country. Um, so you know, I I I think that a lot of these people are here because of our generous benefit system because they know that they will be put up in four and five star hotels although that's not good enough for them they have been complaining about that as well um the, the government advertise what you get when you come here illegally um and the reality is um why wouldn't these people take up the opportunity this is the the land that keeps giving um and you know, if you if you are living in a, a in a, a country which is, is um, struggling with their finances and you you don't have any prospects, why wouldn't you come to the UK and take advantage of everything being free? Our government need to get a grip of it um, and stop handing our tax money out to these invaders and these people who are coming here illegally. 
they, they are breaking the law even before they get into the to the country because they're coming here illegally and they need to, need to be treated like the criminals that they are um, instead of um, like they're, they're on a state that if is it, um, as king and queen of the country, kings and queens of the countries. Um, it's an absolute disgrace um, how our government are dealing with this. Um, I don't blame the, the, these people for coming over in the dinghies. Uh, as you say, maybe if uh, our elderly get on a dinghy and come, come over, they'll be treated a bit better. Um, you know, our government have caused this and until those policies are, are stopped full stop um and until we stop handing money hand over fist to illegal immigrants coming into our nation then um, we are going to have this problem i mean if uh, australia uh can stop the stop the boats and like we managed to get uh, Indonesia, Indonesia, where these boats come from. We managed to get cooperation from that government that they don't set off. Like if we're many able to to do that, uh, uh, surely uh, the British government can have. Uh, because obviously France must know what's uh, what's going on. How come there's no anger at uh, Macron for just? allowing these people uh just to set sail again this comes down to brexit and even the eu and the eu want to punish the the uk for for daring to leave their their uh elitist group um and i believe that that france is is complicit in this um to punish the united, united kingdom um but of course, there's ways to stop these boats from coming. You know, the 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 minute that you you know you turn a boat back, it's going to deter more boats from coming. Um, but we're not turning any boats back. We aren't trying to to stop these boats from coming in. We are escorting these illegal immigrants from the these dinghies um, and into our nation and giving them um, money and accommodation, clothes. And these people are getting off these boats with with the latest iPhones, better trainers than I'm wearing, better clothes than I'm wearing. Um, and they they are able to, to come and avail of, you know, these four and five star accommodations. They aren't poor people. They aren't, um, if they are flame war, which I don't believe many of them are, um, but if they they are flame war, they have got out quite soon because they are coming and they are better dressed than most British people. Because they've got uh, Amani clothing on. Yeah, yeah. And they, they are taking selfies on their iPhone. We, we have seen videos of them actually on the dinghies where they're throwing their passports over the, the side of the dinghy in order to not be identified. And they're starting, you know, a, a whole new life here. Um, I do believe that further down the line, this is going to turn very, very sinister if we don't catch a grip of it. Um, and I, I worry about the nations that they're coming from as well because they've lost all their their fighting age men, um, and if they are in in war, how can you defend your your country when all your soldiers are are you know living it up in the UK, um, in four and five star hotels paid for by the British government? Um, I think what we need to do is the British government needs to stop. Um, putting them up in four or five star hotels. If they come here illegally, they can live in the streets, um, and it, they can, and and you know, and then we we can start voluntary repatriation, um, where we say, you know, if you don't want to live in the streets, then come and we will pay for you to leave. Um, and I I do believe that the only thing that the British people should pay for in regards to the illegals is them leaving. Um, and unfortunately, we um, we are handing them our tax hand over fist while we suffer, and it's an absolute disgrace. Yeah, I can't believe it's been tolerated for for so long. There's a another question on entropy from I'm a stupid moron for three Australian dollars. What uh, what does Jolene think of Gemma uh, O'Doherty? I hadn't heard of her i had to uh, google her but i'm sure uh, you know of her yeah um Gemma is the the irish patriot isn't she just so i'm talking about the right person 
I uh, yes. Uh, so she's described yeah. by Wikipedia as an Irish far right activist and conspiracy uh, theorist. So if Wikipedia is saying that about her, then she must be she's not bad. <laughs> she's obviously a good woman. Um, yes, um, I've I've seen bits of Gemma's work. Um, the, not loads. Um, however, I know that she she is doing a great job. Um, down in the Republican era of Ireland, and the the re the reality is that um. Parts of the Republic of Ireland are, are, are um in serious um should, are in serious turmoil at the minute. Um, I mean O'Connor Street. I I've seen a picture of O'Connor Street. The Republic of Ireland isn't a, a country which I would be which I would frequent. But obviously, you know, we, it once was British, and we we did build it as a nation. Um, and I've seen a picture of O'Connell Street and it looked like somewhere from India or, or Pakistan or um, somewhere from uh, uh, the Middle East. Uh, it was absolutely terrifying to see. It used to be, you know, a lovely Irish market where you could get your goods. But it, it, it was um, basically, you know, um, something from the Middle East. The, the, the market has turned into um, mostly foreign nationals who are shelling. Um, the place is absolutely stinking. Um, and I was really shocked to see that. Um, and, and I was saddened to see it as well, as I say. Um, the, the way I see it is that the British built the Republic of Ireland, and although they're no longer part of the UK, um, we have so much history with the Republic that I would like to see um, it, it, it um, go back to its former, former glory. Um, but unfortunately, it has taken an even more dangerous road than the UK has. Um, and with the population being so small, um, it won't be long before the Indigenous people are outnumbered. Um, but the Indigenous people don't seem to be standing up. So it is refreshing to see people like Gemma O'Doherty um, standing up um, and, and trying to fix the problems that, that um, are, are so harrowing um in the republic of ireland um and it, i i think what we need to do um is to see more voices coming from the republic probably the irish time pub uh, irish times pub in melbourne is probably more irish now than the republic of ireland absolutely absolutely um and and you know there, there's america australia um even in Spain, I have been in. A, I've seen Irish pubs in Spain, um, and people are very proud of their Irish history, uh, their Irish heritage, um, and what I fear is that Ireland isn't what they um, imagine in their heads. Um, you know, we see St Patrick's Day is is huge uh, uh, in Australia <laughs> and uh, very. Uh, Irish, but it's sort of also an excuse to get drunk day as well. Yeah, well, well, the Irish are quite well known for that, you know. Um, but it, it it's um it, it's something. It, it's probably the one day when Ireland becomes Ireland, um, because as I say, it has been changed beyond recognition. Um, when the referendum for abortion um, and same-sex marriage happened so in, in the Republic of Ireland, I thought it would be rejected. Um, I thought that the, the children were safe um, when, when that came up and when they had voted for it, I thought, what has happened to the good people uh, of the Republic of Ireland? Because, you know, that 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 was it just wasn't on the cards when when i had thought about it um i didn't think that they would ever do that um but the reality is that they have been disconnected from god um and that that's thanks to to their churches um and i think what we need as, as a global um if, if we're going to do anything globally is to get back to to god um and the godly nations that once were glorious um need to to get back to god and stop this um stop this nonsense and you know even if you aren't a christian and you don't believe in god the morals that the christianity um uh, the christians believe are good morals they are good 
they they create good people and they create good um citizenship uh, I do believe that that's exactly what we need to get back to. I understand people don't believe in God, um, but I think they need to, to give it a chance because if we continue to spiral away from God, um, the, the world is going to see um, very harrowing, um, scurry times. And um, what I hear is that we're leaving nothing for our children to, to look forward to. Uh, we're having the the same crisis here uh, in Australia, particularly in uh, Victoria. I mean, we had this week uh, uh, a CEO of of one of our uh, Australian Rules Football uh, clubs, uh, Essendon, uh, forced to uh, resign uh, because uh, he uh, wouldn't step down from being the the chair of a a, a Christian church, which preached Christian things and now Premier known as dictator Dan Andrews uh, condemned uh, his, his his church and so basically he was forced out of his job for one, uh, one day uh, because he was a Christian. It's insanity. It's absolutely insane. And what, what gets me is that if it was any other faith, um, the crime would be discrimination. Um, but because it's Christian, it seems to be open game. Um, and, and, you know, if you, you mention even facts about Muhammad, um, uh, if, you, if you mention um, even the facts um, in regards to him, um, you, you're, you're liable for arrest. Um, I have been very close to it myself many a time. Um, but if you if you criticise Jesus, if you want to, to speak about Jesus, there's no action taken whatsoever. There's not even an outcry by the churches. Um, and, you know, that's something that has really came up over COVID, is how inactive the churches are in defending the faith. Um, and they, they say that they're true believers um, and that the, the they are Christians, but they're not acting in a Christian manner because they're not defending their, their faith. Um, and, you know, it, it would only happen to a Christian. It wouldn't happen to a Muslim. It wouldn't happen to a Hindu. It wouldn't happen to a Buddhist. It just wouldn't happen to them. Um, but Christianity seems to be fair game for mockery. And and I think it's absolutely disgusting. Um, but it is all predicted in the Bible. It's all written down in the Bible that this is going to happen, um, and I just, I just can't wait till the day that we win because we will win, and and that's something that I am sure of that we will win this fight um, because it is predicted in the Bible. I've also covered on my show, and I've uh, seen you uh, share the the plight of Enoch uh, Burke, a, a teacher in the uh, Republic of Ireland, who is imprisoned indefinitely because he uh, refused to stay away from a school he was suspended from because he wouldn't uh, call a, a child the gender-neutral pronoun they and like that is like this is probably one of the most horrifying imprisonments because there's like there's no actual trial crime no charge or anything it's just an indefinite detention well i just i i'm so shocked that this has happened um i feel so sad for 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 the Republic of Ireland, that this can happen. Um, it doesn't matter what the man's crime is. Um, and, you know, the thought police um, need to be decommissioned. It's as simple as that. They need to go. Um, these people are basically saying, you're not entitled to your faith. Um, you are not entitled to, to your religious beliefs. And um, you should, you know, you need it. what what they have said is until he conforms to to that idea um that he won't be released from prison so basically this is this is you know authoritarianism in in the most extreme ways i watched a a, a video of hindus um, ripping down church in india the other the the other day and i thought well, how long is it going to be before they start ripping churches down and in the likes of the republic of ireland and even in the uk because they're so anti-christian um and this is about um freedom of religion um something that the 
my, my nation, uh, my part of a part of the nation um, knows all too well is something that we have to defend, um, and I personally will defend it to the death. I know Enoch has has said that he will stay in prison because he will not um, he will not mock. God, um, and the the reality is that if you're a Bible believing Christian, you should not deny God's word, and that is all that Enoch is doing, and it's an absolute disgrace. I don't know how it's being allowed to happen, how it's legally happening. Um, obviously, there is a loophole in the law that needs closed as soon as possible, and you know I I just can't believe the the. There's no a crap like this. The mainstream media should be covering this every night until that man is released, but they're not. Um, is the, TV the, News or uh, Talk TV covering it? So, so they, they have covered it in the past, but they're not covering it that it's still ongoing that this man is in prison until he changed until he has the same uh, uh, thought uh, thought as as the liberal left um they're not covering it as much as it should be covered every politician um who who classes themselves as a freedom lover or a free thinker should be speaking out against this there's no politicians that i have seen um actually speaking out against it there may have been one or two um but but no party as a whole has come to back you know but but um it's an absolute disgrace. The whole situation is disgusting. Um, there's a loophole there that, that is is infringing on his rights. Um, I don't know how the European uh, Court of Human Rights haven't stepped in on this, um, but um, if this is the future, um, we are in deep dark streets because we cannot you know if this if, if we are going to be imprisoned for our thoughts and our I, I, ideology um we are going to have to build more prisons because i know um especially in northern ireland we will not conform to any um to any to turn any marxist agenda um and it's as simple as that um I know that we will stand for our principles um, and it's it, it's something that every patriot, anyone who cares about freedom needs to needs to stand up for. Um, whether you agree that, that Enoch's religion is the right religion, it doesn't matter. He has the freedom to practice whatever religion he likes. And I, as I say, I just don't know how it's going on for this long uh, without someone stepping in. You, you never got any recourse uh, for when you were suspended as a democratically elected councillor. Like it didn't, like, how did they suspend you from a, a position you were democratically elected from? Tim, basically, um, all the opposition parties, um, all, all my opposition parties, I, I was an independent councillor. I left, um, I was part of a party, I was elected as part of a party, but per because of personal issues, I left the party and I was an independent. So that basically put a target on my back. So what happened was Sinn Féin, the Green Party, SDLP, Alliance, all teamed up and um, put complaints in to the local government commissioner against me. Somehow um, they, they changed all uh, the rules to suspend me while they investigated it. Um, four years they've been investigating for Tim. Um, now I had taken it to the High Court and I had had my suspension suspended for, for a few months. Um, but they actually suspended me just before the election, which is why I lost my seat. Um, so I democratically did lose my seat, but it was um, because I was suspended just before the election, I couldn't campaign properly. I had my social media taken down just before the election. Um, and they had suspended me in the interim so i uh i still haven't actually got the the investigation results of that um they are due very soon um i know um later this month i'll be in with the commission I'm, I'm not expecting any results there um, i'm not expecting to find out what uh, what the conclusion of the investigation was but um the reality is that the when a, 
a cabal of my opponents teamed up against me, they were able to have me suspended from my democratically elected post. Um, and it, it, it happened to me, it can happen to anyone. Um, and that is absolutely terrifying to know that even when we vote, our vote really doesn't count because th they can just team up and get you removed from your position. Uh, the process is designed to be uh, the punishment. Well, it's been uh, fantastic to, to speak with you tonight here, uh, today over in uh, the, the UK. I said uh, we'd probably go for a, 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 around about an hour, but um, as I um, oh, uh, probably thought, the, the conversation just took us where it where, where it did um now a few people in the chat uh, have been asking where they can follow uh, uh jolene you're on twitter you have your own youtube and you're on telegram and gab yeah um get her um and trish social as well um and my name's the same for all of them jolene bunting uk um go on follow me and um I'm happy for for anyone to contact me if you if you um, have any information um, that you think would be useful. I really appreciate. It. I get articles sent through to me all the time, which um, really enforce my my arguments, especially with court cases coming up and and things like that. So. Um, Tim, it, it, it has absolutely been a pleasure speaking to you today, um, and. Uh, it, it's only it's um, half eleven here in the, the UK, um, just coming up to the afternoon, um, and you know it's great to know that there's patriots like you in Australia because I do hear some horrifying stories from Australia, um, and I'm just glad that the Australian people are are standing up to the authoritarian regime that you have um, got at the minute. And hopefully that will change soon. Yeah, it's been a better year this year, though. In Victoria, we have our uh, state election coming up, where the the premier who locked us down for two hundred and sixty two days, Dan Andrews, is running for a, a third term, and the polls uh, suggest that somehow he will will get reelected. So that's that's probably the the biggest. Uh, uh, crossroads, well, at least us in Vic. Yeah, um, I, I'm a great believer in the democratic process. Um, just because the polls say it doesn't mean it's going to happen. And Kerry, obviously, in Australia, you have to be, you have to go out and vote, uh, which is fantastic. Um, but just encourage everyone to get out and, and to vote for, for. Uh, a, a, a united candidate to get that that um, pig out of of his seat and then sure he doesn't have um, a third term because um, the Australian people deserve better and and that's the reality of it um, you you do deserve better um, and I really hope that things turn around for both the UK and Australia and um, in Europe as well. Um, I was really glad that Italy um, changed the Prime Minister recently and I hope to see good things coming from Italy um, in the future and I hope that that is a sign of things to come for for the world, um, for every country, um, that they will get um, people who genuinely care about the nation um, in government. Uh, we hope that uh, Bolsonaro is is re-elected at the, uh, the the end of the month. And obviously the Swedish uh, Democrats had a phenomenal uh, win uh, last last month as, as yeah. well. So uh, the, the the EU commissioner Ursula von der Leyen, she's uh, she, she's she's very like you can tell that she's seething when she's speaking. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the reality is that these people hate this. They hate it when we win. Um, but as I say, the Bible says that we will win. Um, so let them hear all the like because they are full of hatred. Um, and we know that we are on the right side of history. 
Well, stay safe and and stay stay free. Uh, I I very much hope that uh, you you remain a a, a free uh, woman for well uh, the 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 rest of time. I hope I'm still allowed to use that term, free woman. Um, and yeah, I hope that uh, the UK. Uh, gets through uh, this winter without too uh, uh, too much devastation. Tim, yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, I'll, I'll, if anything does go wrong, I'll come on and I'll I'll give your viewers uh, an update on how we get through the winter. Um, but I think with the Great British spirit, um, I think we will get through it okay um we we will join together and ensure that our older people and our children are fed and watered and uh, have the enough heating um to get them through the winter um and i'm just so glad that we do come from a community which is um very proud to, to of of their community and um, we'll all team together um i know not everyone has that luxury so i am pretty um blessed for that uh that's a very very heartwarming way to to, fin to finish the show all the best and we'll definitely keep in touch big thing tim thank you all right, everybody, uh, that's the show for tonight. Now, the good news is that uh, Wilms Front uh, will be back next week. I will be joined next week uh, by uh, West Australian uh, academic uh, Rocco uh, Lianco. Uh, he co-authored the uh, Deconstructing SCOMO uh, book uh, with uh, Professor Augusto Zimmerman. Uh, so he has been writing uh, and commenting a lot about how the uh, federal liberal opposition and the state parties who are in opposition should uh, rebuild. And he's got some very strong opinions on that. So I cannot wait to speak with him next Thursday. There'll be no uh, Trad Tasman talk uh, tomorrow at night, uh, but uh, you will uh, see me at uh, the March for the Babies uh, this Saturday, October 8th at Treasury Gardens in Melbourne. That's where it begins, and it's a uh, uh, march to uh, Parliament House. Uh, so it is uh, chaired by Bernie Finn, uh, leader of uh, state leader of the Democratic Labor Party, formerly Liberal MLC. Uh, so it's stand for the unborn join thousands speaking for those without a voice this family friendly event is it's time to take a stand against our laws disgraceful abortion laws and celebrate life because in victoria uh, abortion is legal up until birth it is well it was the the model for well it was the world's worst abortion law and now it's been rolled out all over uh australia and uh one of the things that, well, uh, Dan Andrews, he was the health minister at the time, he uh, began exporting uh, along with, well, he was the first to uh, legalise uh, euthanasia and that spread like wildfire as well. The uh, There's now exclusion zones outside abortion clinics, 150 metres. Uh, so there is uh, little uh, defence uh, for the uh, unborn here in uh, Victoria. Uh, the Antifa socialist left uh, planning a counter protest. I believe that Fiona Patton of the Reason Party will be uh, uh, attending. Uh, there's also uh, going to uh, the, the Mission to Melbourne uh, Freedom Rally also begins on, on Saturday. So there's a, a lot of pro-life, pro-freedom activity happening in Melbourne. So they'll be especially triggered the Freedom Life uh, haters. So it's all, it's all going to be happening here in, in, in Melbourne. So it's, it's great that uh, uh, this, is, this is happening. 
So thank you all of you uh, for watching. Thank you for the super chats and uh, I'll see you. Well, you'll, you'll see our coverage on, on Saturday and I'll be back uh, Monday uh, to for Tim's News Explosion back live, 8.30 p.m. Melbourne time on the Wilms Front channels. Uh, I'll be going into in detail uh, about uh, the disgraceful uh, uh, treatment of the, uh, the former uh Essendon uh CEO and also I'll be doing a March for the Babies uh review uh as well. Uh so thank you all for watching. Uh take care, stay safe, uh stay free, stay warm, stay sane. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.